Hello, everybody. To your wonderful neighbor, neighborhood average guy, John Corelli, and his average guy opinions. This is episode number 115, I believe. Who knows? I'm lost. I am so lost. But as humans, aren't we all? Uh, this is part two of uh, what started out to be a kind of a a treatise about losers and are we really and you know what is winning in the game of life is it he who dies with the most toys wins what really is it but I, I, I didn't feel like being that philosophical so when I uh, started the video I talked a little bit about the show I was into and I hope you guys watch too because I think it's really good and then I uh, brought up this little guy the only trophy I've ever won because I've been a loser all my life um, but yeah so part two is just gonna be about my soccer memories because it was a big part of my life growing up here's me uh, circa 1976, pretty sure it was 76, uh, chubby little guy in the foreground, um, at Paramount Park, which is, uh, here in Wheat Ridge, um, and, uh, <laughs> it's f so funny how cheap, uh, soccer was back then, um, this will probably be the thumbnail too, but <laughs> we, they just gave us one shirt when I was, uh, when I was young, this is, like I said, I was probably nine there, maybe eight, and it was just a thick shirt. It was a double-sided shirt, like the old gym shirts from the 70s and 80s. And you just reversed it. You just turned it inside out. And one side was red for away games. The other side was blue for, for home games. They, we got some stirrup socks. Um, I, I love that. I was, like, ritualistic putting those on in the morning. Because uh, I don't know how many of you know about this. You probably do if you're a parent of a soccer kid or were a soccer kid yourself. Um uh, you would get up uh, early games when you were young, like the six, seven-year-olds are, are, have to do like the eight o'clock games. It's, and I feel bad for the parents. So thank you, mom. And thank you, Russ. And even sometimes my dad would show up. So thank you, all of you, uh, for showing up to those. Because <laughs> luckily, a lot of them were at, at my, my home park like a block away. I think sometimes my mom just said, you know what? Just go up there. We're tired. But I think most of the time they showed up. I know my that picture, for example, was taken by my stepfather, who was kind of a photography bug for a while, pretty good at it. And uh, so we've got some really good pictures all over the house and in albums and stuff, thanks to him, mostly. Um, but yeah, so uh, some of my memories. Uh, I was actually good. I think I, I said that in part one. I was a good player on a just bad team for several years. Um uh, my brother and I like to argue about this sometimes. Uh, Sean was on an amazing team, went to state, uh, would play teams one or two years older than him sometimes just to get better. I mean, they not only went to state, they won state several times. He has like a trof trophy somewhere. I don't know where they are. I'm looking around because I'm in his old room when he was a kid. That's kind of weird. Right now it's Logan's room. It's probably going to be my room soon because, shit, I'll probably just live in a closet soon. But that's another episode for another time. Let's talk about soccer. But Sean and I, I always thought we were about equal caliber players, but I look like a superstar because I was a bunch, I was just around a bunch of guys who couldn't play. They were non-athletic. <laughs> they didn't give a shit. They, they were just clumsy guys that just didn't know how to play. Um, I mean, we couldn't even do drills right. Just simple passing drills. I would get so frustrated and my coach just like, just felt bad for me because like, you deserve better than this because you play hard and you're pretty good. Um, but I, and, and so Sean was like an average player on a really good team. And I always thought we were about the same caliber and he'd kind of get mad. He's like, oh, I'm way better than you. I go, you're on a better team than me, but I don't think you're way better than me. I go, my teams were horrible. My mom wouldn't even watch one time. I'll tell okay, so let's go through the quick stories cause I'm going to run out of time cause I only got six minutes. So first story, um, first goal I ever scored, um, was in the park right by my house called Randall park. They used to have soccer games there. Sometimes soccer practices too. And, uh, it was a game winner too. Um, it was so cheap. We didn't even have nets. There were no nets for the, it was Wheat Ridge, I guess. I don't know. Eastern Wheat Ridge isn't quite the uh, hoity-toity area that Western Wheat Ridge Applewood is. So uh, we were almost in Denver. Ooh, but yeah, we didn't have nets, but I remember, uh, we just had like a scrum in front of, I was probably seven and uh, maybe eight. And we had just had a big scrum in front of the, 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 the goal. And I just, just blasted and it went over everyone's head and through the goal, and I remember celebrating a lot. And I saw um, one of my teachers at my school, his name was Mr. Schnebley, he was a fourth grade teacher, and I think I was in second or third grade when I made this goal. And I was like, ah, it's going crazy. And uh, I go, Mr. Schnebley, did you see that? And he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. This kid was on the other team. <laughs> So naturally, he wasn't celebrating a lot. Uh, so that was my first goal that I ever remember scoring. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the only goal. I didn't, I mean, not the only goal I ever scored. It was the first goal I scored. So it was memorable. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I was on this, like I said, bad team. Honestly, I think my coach 
put me in like the first half of games to try to score a goal and then put me in as a goalie in the second half of games to try to pre preserve. That was his strategy. It never, almost never worked. Like I said, we almost never won a game. Um, a couple years later when I was uh, nine, almost 10, I remember uh, pretty uh, distinctly because my mom was pregnant. My mom was on the verge of having my brother. Uh, he was born September 4th, 1977. And uh, so it was like a summer league, I guess, or maybe it was spring, maybe she was just really big, but I thought it was, we were playing the summer, playing up in Golden, and this team owned us. Um, like I said, I'm about to turn 10, and this team just owned us all the time, it was really frustrating. And uh, I, I put in three, I put in, I did a hat trick, and we won four to two, and that was a big deal. And uh, my everyone was freaking out, because hat tricks are rare, and they're even more rare um, you know, then like I said, I was pretty good. So that was a big deal. And it was a big deal to beat this team that we had never beaten. They're just our nemesis. And so that was kind of cool. And then unfortunately we we're going to go to pizza alley down, which is down in the Highlands. It wasn't called Highlands back then. It was just West Denver. Um, it's been around since right before that happened. It was one of our favorite restaurants. It was like 1976, 75, it went up and uh, it was New York style pizza. We'd go all the time. We were going to go do that. But my mom didn't feel good because of the pregnancy. So that's why I hate my little brother kidding but i didn't get to have pizza didn't get to really celebrate it very much afterwards maybe we went the next day i can't remember but it was kind of a bummer at the time but that was cool so i scored a hat trick in that game that was a big deal um i remember uh, a couple of years after that we were playing at paramount park that place i just pictured and uh we had ooh, we'd upgraded our uniforms we had the classic wheat ridge like blue we had two shirts now Ooh, <laughs> and this how you have a home and away shirt the, the the home shirt was blue with like yellow little sleeves just like short sleeves like this and then the uh, away was yellow with blue sleeves and a little soccer ball and it was way and it was so much nicer and the other thing didn't have any symbology on it at all we didn't get numbers yet we, it was still only this you know the late mid to late 70s maybe close getting close to 1980 but kids didn't get numbers back then we were all just part of one team we didn't have very few kids had names on the back of their jersey some did uh, my brother's team did that was a little later in the 90s or, or close, late 80s early 90s when people started getting more personalized and more frankly uh just better funded you know so uh but i remember this game uh, another game winner um <laughs> And, uh, and ended up playing with this kid later. He ended up on, on our team later as we got you know, on the good team that I told you about when we won the trophy. <laughs> the second place in the division, which means nothing. But so uh, this kid was goalie. And it was a hustle play. And it was one of those plays where the ball, uh, just they tried to clear it out and get me to chase it, but I was behind it. But it was slow enough that it wasn't going to get to the goal box. So the goalie couldn't use his hand. So he, he was in a... He was in a predicament because I was chuck, chugging for this ball and so we both get there close to the same time and he kicks it and he just blasts it right into me and uh I have nowhere I, I just felt to go it actually hit my arm but since I was like this it wasn't considered a handball it was a protective you know and it looked like it hit me in the head but it was pretty close right here and I just jumped like this he kicks the ball off of my forearm into the goal because I'm looking around I was like where'd it go I look and it's r trickling into the goal and he's just like can I, and that was a 1-0 game, too. That was a game, re, weird way to get a game winner, but it was just, I was happy with myself. It was a hustle play, you know? It was like, hey, you get in there, and you sometimes things happen if you if you force an issue. So that was kind of cool. Uh, what? Oh, some horrific things that happened. Uh, <laughs> this is later on. I told you I had that good year. That was 1978, 11, 12 years old, and then, unfortunately, I think the coach quit. I ended up on a on some not very good teams, I and I... I think I started not caring. This was probably 1981, 82, because I was 14 years old. And uh, the guy crosses the ball. I'm playing like halfback. I'm like near the top of the box. Um, and this guy, I'm playing defense. And this guy on the other team crosses the ball. And I just put my knee up to just block it. Boom, straight into the goal. <laughs> and now I'm 14, so I was like, I'm not going to cry about this, but I'm pretty upset. Um, I think it was a tight game, too, so that didn't help. Goalie's like, really? And I was just like, Dude, I'm just trying to play defense. Um but so what really happened, hurt, though, is um, I'm just like, Ugh, and down more than usual. And my mom knew that a lot of these games I wasn't happy because things weren't going our way. And, I, and she's like, she's like, what are you upset about? And she didn't, she, that just, and I just lost and started crying because she didn't notice that I had just scored upon my own team. That's how non-invested she was, which is fair. When you watch somebody lose that much, it's like being a Cubs fan. You're not going to start watching maybe until they start getting good again. So that's some of my memories. I also got 20 goals put on me as a goalie one time. We, uh, we were in high school at that point, but I was on a rec league team, and uh, some of the guys played for my high school, and that was 
absolutely humiliating, but kind of hilarious too. You're not supposed to put 20 goal shots on goal, let alone goals up in, uh, in outdoor soccer. <laughs> it was an absolute firing range. Um, didn't help that the fucking goal box was a mud puddle and I couldn't, it was like in a quagmire, but still it was, it was, it was just bad all around. <laughs> so there's some soccer memories. Hope you enjoyed them. Hope you enjoy like watching a pudgy little version of me try to score goals and uh, get back to you next time. Thanks guys. I appreciate your listenership. See you soon. Bye.